What is up, my Yugi Bros? I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! In Business Casual. So I talked to y'all a little bit about Montreal Theory Thunder Family a couple of videos back. So I figured I'd give you guys a demonstration of how the deck works when you are using the Montreal Theory of Thunder Family. I'll have a deck list in the description below. Um, I think the real takeaway from this video is that Vanity's Emptiness is awesome and Star of Spark Dragon plus Vanity's Emptiness wins you games. So this game is against Gravekeepers, and I started out thinking that I really wasn't going to win. I started off in a really bad position, not only did I not with, open with Thunder Seahorse, but he also had Necro Valley on the board, which means that even if I got a Sis Hunter, I couldn't use her. Uh, the same with Recycling Batteries. So I tried to duality into an MST. I ended up getting Violon Prism instead uh, with the duality because I couldn't get an MST, and I decided to do the Thunder Seahorse into two Thunder Seahorses in order to try and get the same kind of advantage I normally would with Sis Hunter. So he ends up Book of Mooning the Star of Spark Dragon that I attempt to summon with Violon Prism, uh, and then during his turn he MSTs my Breakthrough Skill and flips Spy. I use Vanity's Emptiness, uh, really hoping that he didn't have Imperial Tombs, and it turned out that he didn't. So the next turn I flip summon the Star of Spark Dragon, attempted to attack the uh, Spy. He used Fiendish Chain on the Spar Star of Spark Dragon, which I then MST'd, and then chained Spark Dragon to keep the Vanity's Emptiness alive. He dualityed into Cyber End Dragon and then scooped from there. So in this next duel, it's versus Galaxy Photons. It's super short, but it just demonstrates how ridiculously good Vanity's Emptiness is. Uh, he starts his turn. He uses the spell card to add two, uh, to add two Galaxy Eyes to his hand. And he tries to use Galaxy Soldier, discarding the Galaxy Eyes to special summon it, but I use the Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, and I go for the Sis Hunter next turn, and the amount of advantage I have, he just cannot get over with Vanity's Emptiness on the board, and he scoops. So the next game is versus Heroes. This game was really up and down for me. Uh, I opened really well. I started off with um, start with uh, Thunder Seahorse, three defensive back row, uh, while two defensive back row and a trap stunt, and recycling batteries, which is about as good as a hand can get. Then he bulldozes through both my, de my defensive back row with MSTs, and then goes for Wild Heart. Uh, and runs over my Sis Hunter, and that is kind of a major problem for me. But the next turn, I just do my Thunder Family things. I use the Thunder Seahorse, then summon Sis Hunter to get the Thunder Seahorse back. He torrentials, and that's kind of okay because I already have a substantial amount of advantage. The next turn, he summons another Wild Heart and attacks for three thousand. During this turn, I get back both my Sis Hunters with recycling batteries and then go Paw Hunter into Sis Hunter. And this turn, I really want to make a big push, so I go for M seven. Uh, which would allow me to get in extra damage, plus it would allow me to get Xyz materials back from the graveyard next turn. But he does go for Mask Change, uh, which I did not actually see coming. He goes into Diane, which he then uses to run over the M7 and summons a Shadow Mist from his deck. This is a really bad position for me, but fortunately he doesn't have any other back row to set with his Mask Change, so I know that that's Mask Change, so I MST it. Uh, and during the next turn, I go for Honor Arc, and then I take the Diane, run over the Bubble Man, because right now I don't know what he has available to him, so I don't want him to get that Shadow Mist off. I want to make sure that I'm in an extremely good position in terms of advantage before I let him get that search off of Shadow Mist. He goes into Miracle Fusion to try and run over my Arc with, a, with a, an Absolute Zero, which I then compulse and then detach the Diane to keep the arc alive. During the next turn, I feel like I've got enough enough advantage after I discard a Thunder Seahorse to get more Thunder Seahorses to try and run over that Shadow Mist. I summon one of the Thunder Seahorses, attack over the Shadow Mist, uh, and I begin to start putting in damage. He tries to bring back the Shadow Mist with Call of the Haunted, but I trap stun it, uh, and during the next turn I attempt to OTK, knowing that even if he has the Mirror Force, I have a crazy amount of advantage over him. So the next duel was versus Ghost Trick Monarchs, and he was playing a couple of unconventional cards, but this is just another demonstration of how ridiculously good Vanity's Emptiness is in this deck. I open with two Thunder Seahorses, which, you know, isn't ideal, but it is still pretty good, especially considering that I have Vanity's Emptiness and another defensive back row. I go for the standard Sis Hunter play to add the Thunder Seahorse back to my hand, uh, and he does end up using Memory of an Adversary to try and steal my Sis Hunter, uh, and then he uses the damage he takes from Memory of an Adversary to get Ghost Trick Mary to get Yangshi on the board, uh, and during the next turn I go for Omega, flip the Vanity's Emptiness, and attack into the Yangshi, um, and all he has are Special Summonable Ghost Tricks and his Vanity's Fiend, so that that Vanity's Emptiness just totally destroys him, as I expected it to do, since he was playing Ghost Trick Monarchs. The next duel is versus Satellanites. 
Uh, this was not a particularly good opening hand since I opened with almost exclusively monsters, and that's not something you want to do with this deck. You run a fairly low monster count so to ensure that this kind of thing doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while it did. And this duel ended up going my way because of, once again, Vanity's Emptiness. So I start doing um, Thunder Family things. I add Sis or Maw Hunters to my hand with Thunder Seahorse, uh, and then during the next turn I go for Honorok. I take his Gun Diva. I use Maw Hunter to go into Violon Prism to go into Star of Spark Dragon. I attack for a ton of damage, and during the end phase, or during main phase 2, I set the Vanity's Emptiness, and this is just a demonstration of how ridiculously good the combo of Star of Spark Dragon and Vanity's Emptiness is. Uh, the next turn, I go Thunder Seahorse into Paw Hunters. I attack after activating the Vanity's Emptiness. He's got the Shining Angel, but he cannot special summon with it. My final duel is with Shadows. Uh, and this is not a matchup I expected to do well with, especially considering how many monsters I ended, I opened with. Um, so I discard the Thunder Seahorse to get Sis Hunters, which is a pretty standard play for me. Uh, I use the Ma Hunter to Sis Hunter to get my Seahorse back. During the next turn, he goes Super Poly with uh, Ma Hunter to get Nephilim. I attempt to stop the Nephilim, but he does have a, an Arma Knight in his hand, which he uses to send Dragon to the graveyard to destroy my Fiendish Chain. He then attacks over my Sis Hunter and attacks directly for 28 with Nephilim. During the next turn, I decide to go for Honorarch and take his Nephilim. He uses the card, uh, the Shadow card, that sends a Shadow from his deck to the graveyard. I feel like there was a better play than what he did, summoning that Falcon, because all I have to do is steal the Nephilim and then attack over the Falcon, and he really gets nothing out of that play. During the end phase, I bring back my Maw Hunter, and now I'm in a fairly decent position, um, so I begin to start pushing. I add Violent Prisms to my hand with Thunder Seahorse. I use Maw Hunter to go into Violent Prism. I attack the dragon. The dragon bounces my Honor Arc. Nephilim gets its effect to add Roots back to the hand. Uh, and then during the next turn, uh, he sets the Roots and he sets the sh Delving Shadows, Falling the Shadows, whatever, Facing the Shadows. Uh, and then I summon Star to Spark Dragon, go for Violent Prism. He tries to use Shadow Roots, but I activate the Vanity's Emptiness. He sends Dragon using the Facing the Shadows to the Grave to try and destroy Vanity's Emptiness, but I do have Stardust Spark Dragon, which blocks the Dragon uh, and keeps the Vanity's Emptiness from being destroyed. I run right through for 3500, and the game is over. So that's kind of how the Montreal Theory of Thunder Family works. As you saw, the stun-based cards are really important. You try to keep positive field presence until you can build up to a final Xyz or Sync or synchro play, uh, and try to get that locked down with Vanity's Emptiness. So, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Meanwhile, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.